Welcome to episode two of the After Dark Talk podcast with your host, Super C, the guy. Today, I got a special guest, man, really good friend of mine, one of my best friends, man. We've known each other since 2010, I believe, maybe maybe a little bit earlier than that, but um, I want to introduce you guys to Anthony Showtime Davis, man. Go ahead and give it up for my man. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? Man, today's uh, it's going to be one of those special podcasts, man. We, we're going to we're gonna basically make that major shift from talking about relationship wise like growth everything like that man we want to I want to I want to get really in depth with you on all of that man <laughs> if that's yeah, man. all right with you most definitely that's what I'm here for man, man, talk about man. life our growth our experiences you know it's just what makes us humans hey that's true so what we're gonna do man is we're gonna talk about a lesson learned man we want to we want to talk about that major shift from when you became from when you was a boy to when you became a man and then when you was a man if you didn't have your stuff together, because we know, like, in our 20s, man, we out there wilding awesome. like a mug, man. <laughs> I don't think men become men until, Couldn't like, tell me 30, 31, 32, <laughs> maybe 35. Some men ain't even ain't even men to 40. A, a, a wise woman had once told me that, you know, as you should you should live your life, but you should never get married until after 34. And I, I never understood why, and I'm, it's, it's making sense. Damn, I, wish I, would, I wish I would listen to that, man. Hey, I know, like, <laughs> like I said, it's just a lesson learned. Nothing bad towards my ex-wife, man. She's still an amazing person, man. So nothing bad towards her, point blank, period, man. But I kind of wish I would listen to that advice, man. Hey, and you know, if I would have that, heard that's, it. That's why we call them a lesson learned. Yeah, because, you know, you know dudes, <laughs> like when you put a ring on somebody's finger, dudes be like, hey, man, I'm proud of you, dog. Like, why don't you have that real conversation with me, man? Yeah. Come the hell on, dog. Damn. Yeah, but then, we're like, man, I, I was gonna tell you, <laughs> but bruh, bruh, but man. y'all look so happy, so man, you know. But man, and then the, that's when you do it back to them. Like, man, I was gonna tell you, right? But you did me that way, so I ain't got nothing to say to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So, so yeah, man. So uh, let's kind of dive in, man. Like from the, from the start, bro. Let's kind of dive in and, and talk about like from graduating from high school, man, and now you out there in the world and. And matter of fact, man, let's do it like this. How about we point this towards relationships, bro? Because I honestly, I honestly think that, you know, relationships help us grow. It kind of help us mold ourselves to be, you know, who we're going to grow up and be. And, right and and I think that, you know, throughout all the relationships I've been in in the past, I'm 35 years old right now. And I think that every, you know, relationship that I've been or every encounter I've been in the opposite sex has taught me something or kind of molded me in the way of the person I am today. Facts, no doubt. I mean, so am I supposed to say it's like my fault or something? Because it really wasn't. No, nah, I'm kidding. I mean, <laughs> hell, dude. I can nah. honestly say, I can honestly <laughs> say like 90% of the relationships that I done failed in was my fault. And I'm going to say 90%. It's say it's always the man's fault. Exactly. But you know what, man? I'm honestly going to say like 90% of the relationships that I were in, it was my fault, man. The 10% but was on the girl because she made that, me you quit. You think that's maturity, though? Nah, man. I mean, it's just like life, bro. Well, you know what? Maturity, yeah. It could be maturity. Because back then, if you told me like it was my fault, I'd be like, man, hell no. It was your fault. And I would, I would try to go out of my way to tell you why it was your fault. Now I'm like, well, maybe it was my fault. Exactly, <laughs> man. So I think like I noticed that the person, and, and, and we're kind of going off topic, man, but we need to talk about this right here. <laughs> I kind of feel like the person that I am right now is I'm like that type of dude that I do not like arguments, bro. Nah. I can't stay. If a person starts to argue with me, man, I would tune in for the first two minutes after that. I'm out of the picture, bro. I mean, like, are you listening to me? Yeah. What did I say? I mean, <laughs> I'm going to repeat what you said the first two minutes. Anything after that, we we just. Yeah, you have to have my interest for me to argue with you now. Like, I mean, it, I just can't talk for no reason anymore. It's got to be something that I feel heart, heartful enough to <laughs> to want to have to get off my chest and say. Because if not, then I'm just... I'm, it, it's no point of arguing. Like, man, I feel like you kind of dangerous in arguing, man. I feel like man, you <laughs> nah, just you saying that. I kind of feel like you just gonna stab somebody. You're like, man, but you cheated on me. Da 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 da. You right. looked at that. Nah. <laughs> you going straight in for the jabs, bro. Like, man, nah. <laughs> see, that's <laughs> but that comes with growth, man. Because that's how I used to be. Like, I mean, I, I would just say things without a filter. Now I just I, I try to check myself before saying it. But that comes from a little bit of that maturity that we're talking about and growth about. How, how far we've came in life now. That's true. That's true. Let me ask you this question, man. Are you the type of dude that brought back stuff from like three months ago in an argument? Like, well, <laughs> did you bring up that prehistoric? See, you know, to be fair, I mean, I, 
I try not to say anything, but you know, I let things go. So if if I don't say nothing, I try to let it be. I, but you know, when the time is necessary, I I, I, w- I used to I used to bring it up. But not no more. Not no more, because if if I got something to say, I'm gonna say it now. Like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hold back and just be like, all right, well I'm gonna brush that one under the rug. Like nah, if I got something to say now, I'm gonna say it. And if it's not that, if it doesn't mean enough to me, then I'm just not gonna say it. And, Man. It shouldn't even be brought up no more. Hey, man, you got bigger balls than I do. Because sometimes I ain't going to even lie. <laughs> As a 35-year-old man, I still hold back a lot. Same just man. because I just me. know, I just know, if I bring up two words, that two <laughs> words is going to turn into another 35 to 45-minute conversation. So I just sit there like I am a fly on the wall, and I just <laughs> listen, bro. I don't say anything. And then, and then I wait two or three days to come back. And, and point my case, but but I still yeah. choose my words carefully because I'm like, hey, it's the morning time. You know me, I work four in the morning to like two o'clock in the yeah. afternoon. So I'm just like, I can't argue at night. So I'll wait till like the morning time to oh, that'd you be the fresh worst up. Because you at work and then everything's just brewing in your head and it's just you just going back and forth with yourself and it's like, <laughs> it's, it's a battle, man. Yeah, man. You need some quiet time sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> get away from the house. But Definitely. man, just just speaking on all of this, man. Let's let's get back from the beginning. So we're gonna talk about you know lessons learned in a relationship, like like how it made you become not Anthony Showtime Davis, but Mister Davis, man. And that kind of makes that, that kind of funny, man. Because you know who else is called Mister Davis? Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know he's had some major impactful hey, moments in his life too. That's that's changed him for the better. And I, and I and, and regardless and I, if he's a clone or not, that man is he's a he's a. <laughs> that man is a, is a swole clone, <laughs> right? <laughs> But so. man, yeah. So like, let's let's say going back from the beginning. So like, when I first met you, um, I mean, you were out there, bro. Oh no, we no was doubt. all out there. The whole crew I, 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 was. I out think there. my head was so pumped up at a point in time too. I tried to stay so humble to myself, but it was hard. It I was know, man. Hard. I'm I out know. there club promoting, uh, playing basketball, football, just out there, bro. Like you hey, couldn't man. tell me nothing. And then come on, man, you give me a name like I didn't give myself that name first of all. And then you're going to tell me I'm Showtime, I'm getting called Drake, Chris Brown, light skin niggas taking over, man. So at the time, you know, like I said, you couldn't tell me hey, nothing. Hey, remember, this was like back in the early 2000s when light skin people were in the videos. <laughs> they were all these ladies' videos, man. Making they, them LL Cool J yeah, like lips and stuff. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, man. So, 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 yeah, let's let's take it back to the beginning, man. So, like, like I said, when I first met you, you were out there. And then you met somebody. And kind of, kind of. Kind of grounded you? Can I say that, or, or do you? Matter of fact, you feel it. You feel it, brother. You well, I won't say kind of grounded me. So I, I've, you know, I won't say I grew up in a broken home because I, I, I did have two parents. That I had my grandmother, so I was, I was pretty structured in a sense. But you know, I, I always had the mentality: of whomever I lose my virginity to, I'm gonna marry this, this, and that. And along the way, you know, things happen. Things just don't always work out the way you, you see them working out, the way you envision them, so to say. Um, but one of the most impactful moments for me was, was having my daughter. Like, it's, it sounds cliche to say, but that's, I mean, it's a game changer, bro. Like, you bring in a whole nother kid into this world. And like you said earlier, we're not, we not even in a position to take care of our own selves, and we're going to try to take care of somebody else, let alone a third person. Hey, man, let me, let me tell you guys, the audience, I'm going to tell you something. If you don't have a kid yet, don't rush, because I, I, I've honestly been hearing this. I know that there's some kids or some some young men out there that's like 23, 24 years old talking about some. They see like you know generation what we generation what X right? No, think, we're not generation no, X. I think X is after us. Yeah, yeah, we generation uh something millennials. We the millennials. <laughs> no, that's, millennials. That's weird. There you go. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry, but yeah. So <laughs> they look at generation X is looking at the millennials like man, you guys are we're not young. We're, we're kind of in that middle point, but we we look young. Yeah. And I mean, we could blame that on some government type shit, but we ain't gonna hey. go there. We ain't gonna. I'll even go. I'll, I'll go a little extra too, and say so we kind of <laughs> mentally young too, still. Yeah, and, and that's true indeed. But we, we're we're developing. Yeah, right. I mean, the ladies they already there. Man, so they we, always we, there for yeah, something. Yeah. I don't know how, but they yeah. always from day one. They just Shoot. hey, when they start drinking, they they down <laughs> on our level, and then we we it's like we yeah, flip sides. Right. <laughs> but but like uh, kind of going back to the same, as a young man. I want y'all to live y'all life, man, and try not to have kids at an early age. Not saying that it's a bad thing, because it's definitely something that's, that when it happens, I mean, honestly, when it happens, boy, your life is going to make a complete 180. Now, I know there's a couple people in this damn world that's going to say a 360 and I'll be ready to slap the hell out of them. Because <laughs> a 360 means you're going to end up right back where you were at. But your life is going to make a complete 180. 
you'll be surprised how fast you kind of mature. I mean, you got them guys that's going. I, I think your 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 mindset is wanting to be mature, but your actions right are still kiddish, so to say. Because you're you. I mean, again, you you're not fully developed mentally yet, and you bringing in this kid that yourself is a kid. Hey man, that's why I get women major prize, bro. Because bro. Like, at the end of the day, I think that I think that when it comes, and I'm not, I can't speak for women. We need to have a woman on this show. I need to have a woman on the show ASAP. But no doubt, I think that. When a man and a woman has a kid, that woman, that that girl, young lady that turns into a woman ASAP, she takes control of the will if she wants to. I mean, even if she don't want to. You know what I mean? Because yeah. she automatically jumps into mommy mode. I got to be a provider. Yo, you got to be here. If you're not going to be here, you need to get the head out of the way. Yep. I'm going to put that ass on child support. All of that stuff. Yep. And, and, and to be honest with you, Man, like I said, like if you're not ready to have a kid, man, pump the brakes, live your life, wrap it up. Hell, if you need some condoms, I want you to email me at afterdarktalkpodcast at gmail.com <laughs> and I will personally send you some condoms. Man, I wonder just how for many you. people still use those things. Oh, this guy right here. That's how you know this guy is in a good relationship, man. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I love my relationship, hey. but I mean, damn, I uh, just... <laughs> Hey, anyway. man, this guy right here, man, he's like opening up a pack of new meat, just raw. <laughs> anyways, man, anyways, so so that's just my little advice, man. Just take your time. Don't rush to have kids. No doubt, man. because honestly, women, I mean, I'm not a woman, so I can't really speak on their part, but from what I've seen, no matter what, they're always ready, even when they're not ready. As men, when we're not ready, we're just simply not ready, and even when we are ready, we still can't be ready, so you just got to prepare yourself in the right way. So. Exactly, because it's going, that, that first, woo. That first year is gonna be a damn roller coaster, man. Boy, was it ever? Man, but Even but the going back, so long. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can you go give me some brownies at two o'clock in the morning? What I'm saying. Hey, hey. And if you don't, you don't love me. Like, hey, come on, man. man. I'm so true, man. Man, you can look at a mm. you can look like at a woman on Instagram and just like the picture, <laughs> and you in trouble. Talking about you gonna give me something? It's, it's three a.m. You know they close. Like, how am I supposed to get that? Make it. <laughs> true. True. So. So we go into the first, the first life changing lesson was when you had it, when you had your daughter. Facts. You yes. learned how to not only assist in raising another person, but you also felt like there was something, like there was more love, or you didn't, or now you can love somebody more than you can love, you know, an, uh, a future wife or your mother right, or definitely, yourself. Definitely. Like you. It you also, it also, it also taught like the how to provide, like, and just to be a man, I guess, so to say. Because when, when you bring a kid to this world, and, and at the time, I, I didn't know what I was doing. I thought I did. I had, I did child care in, uh, in high school. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm thinking, oh, I'm watching kids, you know. One day I'm going to love to have one, but then when you have one, it's like... Well, yeah, man, you only got one for two hours, bro. You can get it back. <laughs> right. <laughs> this, this, this is you, and this is yours, and you, you want to do everything you can to, to protect that child, to keep keep that child as innocent as possible. So, you know, it's, that child's going to keep you on your game. And, and what, I, what I love most, too, is it taught me um, also, like, at any negative moment in life, like, when you when you don't know what you're going to do or, or, or what's going to happen next in, in life, like, anything negative you're thinking about or going through, like, once you start thinking about your child – automatically as positive thoughts because you 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 have something that somebody's relying on you for so exactly you whatever you're thinking negatively about wanting to quit or wanting to give up you're like well damn yeah like, man I, I can't so it automatically changes your mindset right there and then bro you know how many times i tried to quit my damn job in the last three months <laughs> and then i just opened my phone and on, on my screensaver i got my youngest daughter and then on the home screen i got my oldest daughter and then 20 minutes later, my oldest daughter texted me, hey, Dad, can you get my track outfit? I'm like, God! <laughs> yeah. Man, I ain't going nowhere, man. And see, Unemployment that, can't help me, dog. Boy, what? <laughs> <laughs> Unemployment see, can't help me. The crazy thing for me is, like, what 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 changed me was having that kid and not, not even wanting to be in a relationship. So it was like trying to be a father without being that husband or, or boyfriend that I, that I was saying I wanted in a relationship. Because things change along the way, man, you know? Man, I think you just touched on the power... This this moves us on to the next <laughs> subject, bruh, bruh. How did you know? Matter of fact, we already know that you like to do stuff wrong. I know you're not. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, the first young lady, you guys have a kid. You have a daughter. Correct. 
from there, as you just said, I mean, there was probably no relationship there. So it was like basically, you know, just a situation to where you just the daughter's father. I hate that word, baby daddy. So we just yep. gonna say on this show, we say mother of the daughter, mother of the son, father of the daughter, father Facts. of the son. I'm glad you touched so, that because before I came, that's one thing I wanted to point out. We are not baby daddies or baby nah, mamas or none of that. Nah. Not at all, man. We get that title. That title is, is too much in the African-American race, man. Uh, we need to throw that on another race, man. And I'm not even talking about any of our brown people, man. We need to throw it on somebody that's a little bit lighter. I'm just saying. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but so so you have that kid and you think it to myself like, damn, me and this young lady, we're not even together. Mm-hmm. Like, this is messed up. Mm-hmm. And, and, and while we're talking about this, don't think that you're the only person in the hot seat because the After Dark Talk podcast, man, is just like a, sh- a show where you can just come clean on everything. So I feel like I need to say it. I'm just going to say it. I'm going to be honest. And I know there's going to be some people out there like, God damn, this dude is funny. But I'm just going to be honest with you, right? I'm just going to be honest. So situation that you had is the same situation that I had. The difference was you were married. I wasn't. I wasn't married. Oh, you weren't? No, sir. You I weren't. wasn't married. Oh. And let me just tell you, and and, so, and, so you and got, I can honestly say, I, yeah, I got married way okay, okay, after. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah, I got married way after. Okay. So my daughter was born in 07. I didn't get married in 2010. Okay. So yeah, roughly, so roughly a little bit later after okay, we met. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. See, that's how I've known. I've known that you were married and got through that process and then, you know, hiccups and Yeah, hiccups and, and issues happen. But I honestly can say that I apologize to... The mother of my daughter, the, the the first mother of my daughter. I have two um, two mothers of my daughters, so um, I can honestly apologize because I'm not going to even lie. If my mind serves me correctly, man, the mother of my daughter was actually in the hospital, bro, and I was at Glorious. Hmm. Tell me how, and, and for the people that's not here in Dallas, if you're in Houston, I'm not even. But see, a lot of people can sit here and be like, "Man, that's so wrong." But do they really know what was going on behind those closed doors? They don't know, and 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 I don't feel like I need to go de- deep into that because that's between me and that person. Right. But I acknowledge my mess up mm-hmm. because while she was getting checked in and all of that stuff, where was I? At? Right. You know what I mean. And I didn't come until, like, later on. But I still made it for the birth. You know what I mean? I, I, I came before she was actually, like, put on the um, epidural. The epidural. And, the, yeah, before the, all of that stuff. I was still there. The shot, I forgot what the other one was. I don't know what the second shot is. But yeah. Like, I ain't, <laughs> it's just, I'm not into listening and climbing in that situation. Did, but Did you watch the pregnancy? Yes. No, no. Like, yeah. I got sick and everything, bro. Like, I, I, I damn near fainted. I threw up in my mask. Boy. You know what I mean? Like, it was bad. That is the life changing. Yeah, moment. man. Like, I, I was like, how the hell did I throw up in my own mask? Like, <laughs> it's like having the coronavirus and trapped in your own face, man. You're just like, what? Like, not only are you throwing up, but you're smelling and you're, you're, you're snorting your yeah. own throw up, which Boy, is bad. Yeah, bad. Man, I was hyperventilating. I was like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> like, just getting the whole thing in my nose and everything. Yeah. But that's my story. So, so, with you, we we kind of we kind of I could say we one in one in that situation because I wasn't with the mother of my daughter. You wasn't with the mother of your daughter. Well, we I mean, was, we we were, but we weren't. We were still living in the same house at the time. Y'all weren't together. No. Nope. And in your mind, see, see, men, this is something that I just recently <laughs> learned as a man. All right, I want you to hear this out, man, because we do some really messed up stuff. If you are living with that woman, right? You two are still in a committed relationship, no matter what you think. I had that messed up. I'm not going to lie. Hey, in I my mind, too. I was like, yo, we're not together. I can do whatever I want right. to do. Even though I'm taking care of her and everything like that, and she's doing the same thing, vice versa, I'm looking at it as, oh, you just staying here. We're just roommates. But in <laughs> actuality, you can't be roommates with a person that you've been with. Exactly. That's hard. Yep. But not to jump off off topic. I'm going too deep. But I just want to let y'all know. Hey, if you're still living with your girl, your baby mama, bro, y'all still going together. All right? That's in her no, mind. And don't deny it either. Yeah. You, know, you know damn well y'all are too. Yeah. Just, just 
Just and, cut the bullshit. And, and if you need some friends in your life that's going to keep it real, just let me and Anthony know. Yeah. We'll, we'll be there, man. Because if you really was, he would tell you to get out. <laughs> just, Email just, just, me. Or, or you would just leave, too. Yeah. Say, you, e- you can keep the place. I'm gone. <laughs> Email me at the, at the, at the, at the dark talk podcast at gmail.com. Say, hey, Anthony Steven, I need y'all to be my friend. I need y'all to be real with me. Hey, we're going to keep it real with you, man. Because no matter what you do, bro, you two are still in a relationship in her mind, her family's mind. Your family mind, everybody's mind, man. You're still together. Okay, so you guys are together, mm-hmm. still staying together, mm-hmm. but in your mind, you're not with right. them. Right, yeah, because there's a lot of stuff going on behind them, behind them doors, man. It's, it's not that, you know, I wasn't trying to make it work while she was there, but in my mind, it's like, we're not together, but you're here, so, I mean, it's a fallback option. Yeah. It's, it's wrong to say, but, I mean. It's honesty. Uh, yeah. And in a man's mind, that's, yeah. that's honesty. Like, you fall back, so. And, and, and I'm being real, because I... We've had these conversations multiple times. Mm-hmm. I said, I don't want to be with you no more. Like, and, and it clicked. Something clicked in my head and was like, wow, I see why men don't want to be with their baby mamas. Or, you know, and that, when, when I think, yeah, yeah. No, when I was when thinking, younger, when yeah. I was thinking that exact way, that's exactly what I said. And now I'm like, wow. It, it, it just clicked right then and there. I was like, so it's something that the, the women are actually doing to manipulate the situation. Yeah. So it, 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 it was a game changer at that point. Tough. Yeah. You're learning stuff. Boy. Facts. You're learning stuff. You're learning stuff, man. I, and, I see and it in I, your and, eye. I, and I criticize so many men for me. I'm like, how could you how could you not be there for that kid? And that's not to say that I wasn't gonna be there, but yeah. I'm seeing why they weren't there. Yeah. And so it it, it really it, it put me back on my own ass. So so right there, bro, I'm gonna be honest with you. When I went through that situation the first time, that uh two times. <laughs> <laughs> the first time. That's when I, I looked at my, my... Now, I don't know what my mom and my dad's situation right. was. You know what I mean? Because that's something totally different. That was like yeah. back in the, and that's the, the early it's 80s. It's not bro. something you need to know, yeah, but you, yeah, you, yeah. You, you know it. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like yo, like Dad, I don't know what the situation was, but you, I, I didn't do, necessarily do you think, say you think, I apologize. Do you, or think I helped, do you think it would have helped if your parents would have had that conversation with you about why they split up? Man, to be honest with you, they were... I don't know if they were really together... They could have. It could have been a situation that you and I were in. You know? It's <laughs> right. funny because, like, no matter what happens, in what generation you was born in, stuff. It's just a repeating factor. Right. Not not just in your life, but it could be in a, another family member's life. Can mm-hmm. be just exactly how. So my mom and my dad can be something that you know my my third cousin and parents went through. Right. You know what I mean? So it's just a repeating factor, generation after generation. So so back to the story. You um, you you learned your lesson right then and there. She was staying with you. You know, you have your youngest daughter. I mean, she's a bundle of joy. Beautiful oh, girl. Oh, no Thank you. So, that happens. And we come into your son. Yeah, and the crazy thing is I had my daughter in 2011, and I had my son in 2017. So, in between those six years, there was a whole bunch of on and off, and I don't want to be with you, and this, this, and that, and then... Like I said, I was always one that fan. And this is the crazy thing. She put me on child support, too. So that, that to me, was a, was the automatic killer. Yeah, right it's, yeah. Over, it's over. Right? Yeah, like, well, like, once you do that, it's done. Like, like you, you, you think that low of me to put me on child support when I'm providing everything for you. Yeah. So, so let you, me ask you, you this question. Greedy now. Man to man. Honesty out. <laughs> Matter of fact, this whole show is honesty out there. Let's go. Do you think that you played a role in her putting you on child support? No. Honestly, playing with her emotions back and forth. And like I said, I'm not judging you because I just learned all of this stuff because I actually did this to a person and well, wasn't realizing it as a man. Okay, I, a, I, I'll say this. What what <clears throat> was going on? I mean, it's, she had every right to, to break up with me and say what she had to say, but to put me on child support, mm-hmm. definitely not. I was, I was there. Like yeah. I was there every step of the way. I provided, did what I had to do. So I, I, I didn't understand it. So and you think it was more of an emotional decision versus a rational decision? Oh, mo- mo- most definitely. And, and I mean, I hate to say it, but I know her, her family has something to do with it as well because her mom kept putting that little bug in her ear. So, yeah. you know. And then plus, her sister her sister had uh, her baby daddy on child support. Her, her, uh, the father of her kid. Yeah. Um, so that's how that went. Yeah. So, you know, that Whoa. little bug back there is like, oh, well, you know, he wasn't doing this and blah, blah, blah. With you. But yet, yeah. you know, you get that, you get that, that court involved and you know now you have no say so um, um, as a man what what you can really do as a father unless yeah. you want to take it that step further which so, is i mean like like in all in all lessons man like what this this older man told me is that whenever you put yourself on child support you get put on child support just handle your obligation mm-hmm. because at the end of the day 
that child is still going to But see, they, they, they tell you to follow those obligations, but you still should be doing much more than that. Exactly. And, and, but but I'm going to say, I'm going to say, just follow the obligation. Right. Yeah. Because now you have a ground standard. Right. That's, that that's, that's something follow. that you can always fall back on no matter what at the end of the Ex- day. Exactly. That, that, that's something the court is telling you, hey, look, if you two can't come to an agreement together, then this is what y'all have to do right here. But if exactly. y'all two can, can coexist outside of this agreement, by all means, do what you do. Exactly. It's not, it's not going nowhere to 18. Right. But... Or, <laughs> or at 13 when the child decides that they don't want to live with that person no more. It's still hard to, to, to oh, no, flip it is. Script, it is. You know I mean? but, just... but a child has, has a lot to do with that as well. But exactly. you, you as a man, again, have to put yourself in a situation to be able to provide and, and do the just necessary like, oh, things. Oh, well, daddy did this for me. And this and this. I, see, I was that type of kid. Even though my daddy wasn't there, like <laughs> I, I, I did that to, I believe I did that to my father. And you know what's funny, man? Like, even when I went, and, and I kind of saw this like when... When um, my youngest mother daughter said something to me that really impacted me, it wasn't like it to me it was fucked up. <laughs> what she said, I ain't gonna even lie to you. But when she said it to me, you know, she was like, "Oh, when you're home and you got your two daughters there, you don't even watch your youngest daughter. The older mm. daughter watches the, the youngest daughter." Mm. And I was like, "Man, what the hell? Mm. What are you talking about?" Da, 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 da. I, in my mind, I'm just cursing her out, mm-hmm. but. Like I told you, I'm, I don't like being argumentative. So I just sit back and relax and I just chill. So then I started thinking like, oh, okay, well, hell, when I was a kid, my mom never did that to me. But I, when I went to my dad's house, right? I went to Chicago. I'm from Chicago, South Side. But anyways. That's why I got my Cowboys jersey on. Hey, man. <laughs> anyways, uh, <laughs> hey, y'all just lost y'all quarter. Anyways, uh, right, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when I went out of town, or when I went back home to stay with my father, I will always be around his girlfriend and her kids. And very little time with my father. So when I thought about that, and it took a lot of stuff to recently happen in my life that was very mm-hmm. impactful, that I was just like, yo, like no matter what, my oldest daughter knows that I love her, hands down. I'll do anything for her. But my youngest daughter don't know that because she's two years old. I mean... She's around her mom all the time just because of, you know, right. we, she's the custodial parent. I'm the non-custodial parent. So, with that being said, it's like, what can I do to make that major shift in her life to be just as impactful, if not more? Because I don't ever want to be more impactful than a right. mother. I want to be just as impactful. So, when she's like, oh, daddy, that's daddy. She don't want to be like, I don't want to go with daddy. I, wanna stay with, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want her to say that. I want to be like, yo, I want to go with daddy too. Right. So, so. When she said that, man, I kind of I kind of thought about that, bro. I'm like, dang, my, my dad did the same thing kind of to me. Like, oh, yeah. so she she got me. She stabbed <laughs> me, bro. Like she stabbed me, and I can't say, yo, mother of my daughter, if you da 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 da, you stupid da da da. I can't say that because you know, even though she got the nuts, the big nuts, to say <laughs> that to me, she said it to me, and it just hit home. Like, yo, man, like she telling the truth. Yep. She telling the truth. So, so with that being said, so your younger son came. You had a new, another bundle of joy. Yep. Got and I was new. on child support then too. <laughs> you would think, boy, let me tell you. Mm-mm-mm. So, so, so right now we're in the whole space to. You know, and see, and, this, this is why I'm telling you how I know it wasn't me uh, who, who forced the hand of being put on child support because I was with another woman in, in uh, 2015, um, and. She ruined that relationship, and so I and me being dumb and ignorant was like, all right, well that's that's her showing she loves me. So that's when I went and had another kid in, t- in 2016, with her, who actually ended up coming in 2017. Man, you so that's that's what I call jealousy. I'm not gonna lie, bro. I always wanted to know why. <laughs> Damn. Okay. And and the thing is, I, I let her do it. Like I mean, I mean, it's not that I let her, but like I let her get in my head thinking, like I said, oh, this is her showing that she loves me, and and, and never really wanted none of this to happen. But I don't think that was her fault, bro. I think that was your fault, man. That's I mean, that, it, that it, that it goes hand in hand. It's a relationship, so you know you can't take. Nah, it wasn't a relationship, bro. That, well, that yeah, I did say it wasn't in one, but the, the, but being that that in that structure is yeah, you, you just. Know, you missed her, bro. Just like, hey, uh, I mean, she I, showed I, me some things I ain't seen before. After after a while, you know, you you, you get to thinking to yourself, and it's like, like what like is? you said, like not only just what if, but you start thinking to yourself, like, dang, was it really my fault? Like, I'm not, I can't put the blame on her no more. So now you're putting it back on yourself. So you, you know, they say you, you point try. you point the finger, but you got three more coming back at you. Yeah. So you wanted to give another try to right. see. Yeah. No, no. And I was also thinking, you know, 
this could this could actually you know change because that's that's actually the time we started a business together. Uh, Fuego Tees. Oh my God, <laughs> T-shirt company, boy. God. Boy. So, but yeah, but now, nah, so and and that, but honestly, that was um, that was another situation just like how it was with my daughter. Like it just it just did not work, and that was like my final straw. Like no matter what, like I was done then. And after I had my son, like I mean, couldn't couldn't the world change how I felt? Like that, those were my kids, no matter what. And I got over the whole thing, and that that was just gonna be the kid, the the mother of my kid. That's all she would ever be. And so I learned how to co-parent. I learned how to stop getting mad. I, I learned a lot of things because I, I just I, I just didn't want that no more. Like I just yeah. it just it clicked, you know. Yeah. Like it just it just, it just yeah. that's just how it happens. And and let me tell y'all something about Anthony, guys. Like I don't ever want to hear anybody say, "Yo." I can't make it, da 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 da, because this dude was supporting the family, two kids, child support, working at. Where were you working at, bro? Walmart. Man, so so I, I don't want to hear it, bro, because like <laughs> I I know with me personally where I work at, like if I had to go down to a TJ Maxx, bro, like I would still put my two kids before that electricity bill. I was sleep. I was sleeping in the dark, bro. And see, man, and that's the thing. Like, I, I don't, I don't care what my situation is because at the end of the day, I got, I got kids to provide for. So exactly. my, my, my daughter wants gymnastics. She wants these, this gear and stuff. My son's getting ready for baseball. Like, what, what, what am I going to do to provide for myself? Does it matter? No, nah, because at the end of the day, I got to provide for them. Exactly. So exactly. I put and myself but, last. But check this out. But you got to, you, you know, the time structure. I know my youngest daughter about to start school. <laughs> this yeah, school. that too. So that, that plays a big factor as well. You know, you got these time frames when you hey, know that money's going to come up. June, I'm not even having an extra $600, right, bro, because right. I got to put somebody in school. <laughs> okay, so, so so now we're here, man. You, you had your first daughter. You had your your, your son, your second mm-hmm. child. Now you and the, um, the mother of your kids is, is completely done. Yep. Now... There's this Anthony Davis is like kind of transforming, kind of testing out these new this new mold that he's in, his new vibes that he's in. And you know what I did too? I, I went I went and had like that epiphany of my life that was like, nah, this this ain't it no more. There, there's something else better out there. I mean, I gotta look out for myself too and, and want some happiness for myself. So exactly. I went I went back to the club scene, bro. And it wasn't really like the club club. It was like bar hopping and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Like like I was getting lost in that stuff, and I got a little too lost a little bit. I yeah. I got back to that uh. Can't nobody hold me. <laughs> nah, but I, I got I got a little lost in it, and then I, I found myself again. Cause like I said, when when you, when you get that far, when you get so deep, those those kids are gonna be right there. And it's gonna be like, all right, no, nope. they see everything you're doing. Yep, and it's like, nah, I'm done. Yeah, I, 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 I can't be that person no more. Exactly. And so I didn't want I didn't want I didn't even want a relationship no more. That's what I was looking for, and it just you know. And then they always say, when you stop looking, it's gonna happen. Cause guess it what, comes guys, knocking on your door. Guess what? <laughs> guess what this dude did. So then, damn my boy, took a chance and a leap of faith of listening to somebody. I don't know who the hell he listened to. And he <laughs> signed up for this amazing app called Bumble. Mm. Now, now, let me tell you something. <laughs> now, let me tell you guys something. And I'm going to tell Matter you fact, I'm, I'm not a- the type to even get on no dating apps. <laughs> I, have, I have the utmost confidence in my, I won't say game, but the way I carry myself and the way I can... I, I, I and talk to women. I'm not going to even lie, man. There's been plenty of conversations where, you know, me and the guy was like, how the hell do Anthony pull these damn females? Like, we do not. Everybody knows Anthony. That's the jacked up thing. But, okay, so let's go back to this. I'm going to have Anthony sit here and explain to you guys, like, how, for, for the people that don't know, how does Bumble work, bro? Man, so, you know, it's, it's not like other dating apps. You know, this this is one where, you you know, you set up your profile, sign up, blah, blah, we do. So, once you, once you get on there, you know, and don't don't come on there looking rough either. First and foremost, don't 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 come out there thinking you gonna just show some money off and all that. Other. Nah, stop all that. Take some more chestnut pictures, for <laughs> real talk. Yeah, but um, so you sign up, you you set up your profile, and then all you can do is like women's profiles. Uh, you just you like them and, and carry carry on. You can't and, even send a message, bro. Bro, once they once they if if they like you back, uh-huh. you can't even message them. So, oh, so it ain't like Tinder. Nah, they oh, they, they have to message you. Oh. You can't reach out to them. So Bumble is a step up from Tinder. Well, that makes sense. A B C D. If we do the alphabet, <laughs> B is right. <laughs> right. And so you know, so I'm I'm on there, and you know, I'm, I'm getting I'm getting you know some feedback from from some and. You know, again, I wasn't really looking like, and I, I was just trying to kill time. And then like, I, I liked one picture, and I was, and I got, I, I ain't like gonna lie, I kind of got obsessed with it because I was like, damn, like she's perfect. Uh-huh. Like in, in my eyes, I was like everything about her, like the, just the way she looks, 
the way she seems to carry her stuff. Like she doesn't have too much on her profile, and, and so it, it made it made my mind wander. So it was just like something about her that I just I just can't get over. Uh-huh. And then so next thing you know, uh, I'm at I'm at Walmart working. I went back to Walmart, and so I'm at Walmart working, and I get I get a hit back, and it was just a simple hey, and I was like, oh oh. So I just like started getting excited, bro. Like I was like, this 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 girl hit me back. So I yeah. messaged back right away. I was trying to be like, should I wait? Should I not? I was like, nah. I'm over that. You like, didn't say nothing stupid, did you? Nah, was, uh, you didn't say like, hey. Nah, I was like, um, why hello there? Oh, man. And, and it's funny because she still has screenshots of all of our messages from uh from the app. Oh lord. So it's it's pretty cool because yeah. we, we we talked for a minute. Um, and, and I was being myself, just cool and casual, and I, I wasn't trying to like do too much at, at first, but at the same time, I was trying to just present myself, like just yeah. be who I am. And, and, and guys, no way, shape, or form is this like kind of sponsorship deal. This is my first podcast. <laughs> but, hey, this dude found love on Bumble, man. You might as well, you know, just just give it a try. Hey, give it a shot. Not like I said, I wasn't even looking for it. But then when I found her, she hit me back. Like, it just it just sparked right away. Yeah, I'm um, saying just give it a try and, and just see what happens, man. That, that that might happen for you. So So, now you meet somebody. You're going on dates. This is, could be like, let's 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 do this as a third quarter. This is third, the third phase of. of I got of, something to say about our first date. I'm being less. Oh, oh, wait, hold up. Let's let's go back. We're gonna go back to that, and then we're gonna go into less than third. So so let's go back to that. So what are we gonna say about that? Our first date. So I, after 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 I did broke off dates with with uh, my kid's mother, I, I was I was struggling for money, but I was still making ends meet. So I went back to Walmart and did what I had to do, and she, I was like trying to go on a date with her. So and I had this nice laptop, but I had no money. So I pawned my laptop for our first date just so I could have some extra money in my pocket. Cause I wanted, to, I wanted to not only like just try to like impress it, but I wanted to make sure that I could at least pay for a couple of the drinks and then just call it done. Then and wait, wait, hold on, man, hold on, hold on. bro. I wasn't in no situation to be dating, is why, I, like I said, I was. Wait, so I just want her to know because I know she's gonna hear this, bro. She knows, girl. <laughs> we, we are honest with each other. But I'm everybody. not gonna even lie to you. <laughs> if that was me, I would have made a gourmet nugget. <laughs> Like something from Wendy's and just go and made that mug. But let me tell you what she did after I told her. Like my my mom, they were uh, they were leaving their house. So I was uh, they, I think she, I don't want to say she got evicted, but she they was going under foreclosure and whatever. But that's that's another topic for another day. But so I was getting I was finding all these things in the garage. I was like, oh man, I could I could take this to the pawn shop and get my laptop <laughs> back, right? And so I'm, I'm texting I'm texting Carla and I'm like, hey baby, um, what are you doing? And I was like, okay, so you know we got this little conversation going, yeah. and she's like, well, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm headed to the pawn shop. She's like, for what? And I was like, oh, I'm you know. I'm being honest, bro. So I yeah. told her, I was like, well, I mean, for our first day, I pawned my laptop just so I could oh have some money to go. God. Bro, you know what she did? She what? She zelled me the money to get my laptop out. Shut the hell up. And I, bro, I was like, what, what? why did you do that? Like, I, was, I got mad because I was like, damn, now she thinks I can't provide. Man, and you know, Zell is the whole amount of money. It ain't like, you yeah, know, nah, it ain't she, like the she cash was like, here, go get your laptop out. You should have never did this, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, damn. But she didn't think no different of me. She was just like, we we didn't even have to do all that for the first date. We could have just simply just hung out and we, we did hang out in the hang out in the car. But we went to uh, Hourglass and Irving, had a few drinks, and we went to a rap battle. Um, and so I mean, we had a great first time. Yeah. But she was like, we didn't have to do all that. We could have just sat, got to know each other. So I was like, well, damn, you said that now, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but hey, everything comes out after the first second right, third date, right? Man. So, so I didn't even think we would get that far. So I, I you know, I had to try to make sure. I, Cause like I said, I just felt something about her that made me just want to pawn your yeah. laptop, <laughs> bro. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, but anyway, so yeah. The question is, who bought you the laptop? Uh, I had got it from uh, what was that? I don't want. It was it was cons. Oh wait, so you bought it though, right? Well, yeah, I mean, technically, but I, I didn't even okay. finish paying it off. Hey, this guy right here. <laughs> I think like your mama bought it or something. Nah, I, I didn't yeah. even finish paying it off, yeah. so. So, so now we, we in chapter three, bro. So now we done with the first two chapters. You got the kids. Now you met this amazing woman that you're with mm-hmm. now, currently. And I've been together for a minute, too. Well, I was going to take her to uh, Vegas the first night we met. And I was like, nah, we, we get married now. Oh, right man. now, and she kept laughing. I was like, "You think I'm playing?" It's kind of sketchy, dog. Hey, man, when you man, that that makes some. Hey, but no, we had a good time. Like, I wasn't like just like being creepy about this shit. You no, know but I'm saying that's like that's like major improvements from where you were, to, yeah. like where you at now. It's like where you could just I, I, you just say, "Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna marry you." You know what I mean? Especially like, after everything you've been through, like you, you you ain't in no position to marry. But what makes you think you're ready to marry this woman? Exactly. Right. Like like how how do you know your non providing ass chapter three and, and going penny by penny is going. Do what you gotta do to marry this woman. Chapter what? three. So I, 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 you know, I already want to know. 
Like, besides emotionally being tied in this relationship, this new relationship, physically being tied in this relationship, what what did you feel outside of the emotional and physical? What what was your men- <laughs> mental state? That's in? what I was gonna say. It's, to, it's, she made me mentally stronger. Like she made me. Like just want to do better. Not just. I mean, I know my kids do the same, but like she actually did something in me that like I didn't really see in any other woman that I had ever been with. Mm-hmm. Like she just gave me that that extra boost of confidence that like, cause you know when when it's time for you to find the right woman, you know, and that's when everything's gonna click for you. And that's what it did for me with her. Like she just she had my back. Like and yeah. I just felt it. Like and it's like how can you say like you you feel that vibe? Like you get that energy off the yeah. bat. Yeah. And so it's like you gotta take that leap of faith. You can't question it. You just gotta. Trust it and, and go with it. Like I, I learned how to do that over time. Yeah. And so you know that, that's that's exactly what I did, and it's it's been it's been very blessing. It's oh, been man. a huge so, blessing. So so now we're here, right? What has she done that made an impact in your life? Like like what has she done that made you want to just <laughs> change and and get on your two? What have you done since y'all been together that made changes in your life? Like as far as like taking care of stuff that you should have taken care of a long time ago. Like what does she do? Uh, well, well, what first, kind of impact first and she and foremost, made? I told her, you know, so obviously when I first said we, I wanted to get married and stuff like that at the beginning, it, it was like, you know, it wasn't yeah. nothing to be taken yeah. like seriously. But I, I was like, this is something I really want to work for. Yeah. So I, I made it my my due diligence to, to let her know and show her. And um, she's come to find out she found out I didn't have a license and this and, this and that. And she's like, well, and I told her about my warrants and stuff. She's like, well, if we're going to get married, you can't be bringing none of that into our relationship. Huh. And I was like, what? So I was like, okay, but, you know, it's supposed to be, you know, together. And I was like, but you know, but you're right. That's something I got to get taken care of for myself. Yeah. So I, I went, I don't know how long I went without a driver's license, bro. Like, boy, that had me in and out of jail for the longest. <laughs> that and all my warrants. But anyway. You know but, you were all dark. You wouldn't be in trouble as much. Man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dark is a bus stop. I mean, not a bus stop, but it's a hey, bus service here in Dallas. And a train. But, um, yeah, and the train. And the train is lit, though. Yeah, remember when we took it for the Mavericks game? Boy. <laughs> Off topic. And he was single around that time. But anyways, uh, yeah. But yeah, so uh, so I just was like, okay, well, I got to get my shit together. Like, I thought I did, and I thought I was going that way, but I was way off track. Like, yeah. I was not even nowhere near close. Yeah. And then she also was telling me, like, it's not about the money that you can you can provide for. It's about, you know, it's, there's a whole bunch of other things you have to do as well to... To provide for me, not just yeah. financially. Now, did she list some of the things that that you would need to do, or that that she would feel like? No, nah, not necessarily. It's just kind of one of those things where it's like, whatever I was saying, especially about my my, my warrants and stuff. She's like, you you know, that's something you gotta get taken care of because you know, what if you know something happens to you and then you yeah, know, you can't be the man of the house at this time. Right, you gotta step it up. Yeah, I feel so like, I have to show why I'm yeah. the man of the house. Yeah, man, that's one of the agendas to move the black man out the house, bro. <laughs> I, I ain't no, I ain't no type of person like that, but hey, man. It is what it is. But you took care, so so you took care of your warrants. You took care, of, you got your license. I'm still back. taking care of my warrants, but it's it's that it's that progress, and it's, it's the fact that she's I've bro, I don't I've never wanted to pay. But I was like, all right, well, if it happens, yeah. it happens. I'm gonna go sit it out, and they can they can deduct whatever so, I owe from so that. So you know what she about to make you do next, bro? I'm already pull up that credit score, baby. We about to pay hey, some hey. off. So we did, matter of fact. <laughs> Ooh, boy, shit. Ooh. We, we we did pull up my credit, and I, I'm not even going front. My credit is a 509 right now. And guess what? I'm saying this because I want y'all to know that there is nothing that's going to keep me from getting that thing up. And I want y'all to know that if y'all have bad credit, y'all got to take care of it too. And I'm gonna I'm gonna be a, a stepping stone for y'all for this process. Because oh, uh, so that means you're gonna check back with us like. In the next oh, six yeah. months, we're gonna have no, another. definitely six months. Cause I got, yeah. I got, I got a plan put in place, and she's kind of helped me with it a little bit too. So, it's, it's just those things, like you know, yeah. these things that I'm not thinking about. That, yeah. I, like I said, she's made me change in ways that I didn't think I was capable yeah. of, and that I thought I was already doing. All I can say is, man, I, I know that these apps can find love, man, but I think that some men hit that that needle in a haystack at times. Yeah. Because I mean, like I said, you're lucky because I know there's some other men that been on Bumble. And they just use it as a platform just to be out here fucking yeah. everybody. Nah, and keep that for the lesser apps like POF and all yeah, that stuff. Like, yeah. there's a reason why it's called Plenty of Fish. But I think what made it worse is the laugh afterwards. <laughs> oh uh, my god! So, so yeah, man. So, so we hear she's making impactful changes in your life, man. You're obviously not the same person that we remember you as, like, in your younger days, man. And I mean, like, you guys are having some in-depth conversations about not only marriage, but 
how to take care of the household. Mm -hmm. And this is something that, honestly, you didn't learn from a man. Nope. So it took, and, and I'll take it, does she, does she have both parents in her household? Uh, once upon a time, um, you know, that eventually split up too. But so, I, I, I did have a step that I will say that, but we was not always close. Yeah. So I, I always felt like I had to do the things that I had to do on my own as a as a boy, teen, and then going on to a man. It didn't take me till I had my kid to realize that he was there for a reason. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. so and we can say the same situation because, like, um, as I've seen, you got you know your daughter, your son, and she has a daughter as well. Correct. And you're stepping up to take that position man and i think that will be more impactful man i know we see these stories like on facebook and like on instagram and just on the news of how you know these fathers are adopting these kids because they're falling in love with them and they call them dad as well mm -hmm. so i mean later on down the road that might be something that you might think of man but i just really think that it's truly impactful um that she is not only you know making a very impactful situation in your life but at the same time, you making one in her life as well, because you're you're honestly being the man that she wanted, somebody that she can probably conversate with and that will listen to her when she talk. And then the same thing vice versa, because yep. we know the truth, man. I know I've been in relationships to where I ain't listen to the woman at all. I ain't gonna bullshit you. I'm gonna be honest with you. I was like, I'm gonna do it my way. It's my highway. <laughs> it is what it is. But now we grow into this thing where we're learning a lot of stuff, and yeah, we can go back and apologize. But you know, those relationships are over. So I think apologizing is always the, the right thing. And, and I truly apologize it, it, for the way it, that it, I was. It helps having a woman that's willing to communicate and listen to you as well. Not, not just to put her own two cents in and say what she has to say, but to be actually willing to listen to you. And not say nothing. Right. And then if she, when, when it's her turn or when she feels like she needs to say something, she will after, after you're done expressing yourself. And, she, and for her, she's been keeping it 100 with me all the way. There's a lot of times I do not like whatever the hell she is saying. But, oh, man, but then I, I'm, I'm like... You would be a man if you did. <laughs> but I look at him like, you know what? I'm done. And I'm, but I'm saying this in my head, and I've said it a few times out loud too. But that's because I'm, I'm being I'm being childish in those moments, and you know that's the reason why she's here. And I, like I said, I, I can't run away from it because, like I said, she's building me up to be the man exactly. that I need to be. So exactly. I, I got to step up to the plate and own the responsibility that she's not only laying on me, but the trust that she's wanting from me. Exactly, man. So, so what's funny, um, guys, is um, to to all of our listeners is like, um, Anthony's pulled up a uh, we're gonna call this what? This the, the, the compatibility test between right. This is the uh, this the um, the zodiac sign. The zodiac sign cap uh, capability test. Uh, I'm not capability. <laughs> <laughs> Compatible. <laughs> test. Yeah, compatibility. <laughs> I'm all way off. But um, to be honest with you guys, it's, it's we're looking at the scores right now. And from what I'm seeing right now, and, and it's, it's truly amazing. So Anthony is a Scorpio, and the young lady, she's a Pisces. And we're looking at the uh, their, their sexual and intimacy capability is only at 7%. Knowing Anthony, that's a goddamn lie. I'm just going to be honest <laughs> with you guys. <laughs> that thing probably at 115. Yeah, no, nah, it, it goes both ways in our part. Y'all some nasty people. Man. I'll tell you Raw dog in there. Anyways, uh, <laughs> and the, the trust factor is at 65%. But based off the conversations that we've been hearing today and just hearing from Anthony, it seems like they 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 communicate a lot to where they just know what's going on. She knows his every move. He knows, you know, her every move. So I want, that 65% don't sound like it's going to be. And like, you know, but to be fair, that 65% is exactly where it should be because when we first met, that's, that's exactly where it was, which is it's good, mm -hmm. but it's not good enough. But the, the next part on here is, is what I think has made that trust go from 65 to where it's at now. So, so what is the next one? What is the next one, bro? The next one is uh, communication and intellect. Wow. And that right there shows us at a 90%. And again, like I said, our communication is on point. Like we, we talk about everything and anything, and we are open with each other. We talk about things. Like, and like I said, we, we, we communicate with each other. We talk back to each other. We don't just listen. But we, talk, we communicate through our problems. I think this right here is like the most impactful sentence within the communication <clears throat> in that area. It says, the possible problems in communication between Scorpio and Pisces are either the roughness of a Scorpio, <laughs> and that's definitely, that's definitely, and, or the excessive sensitivity Bro. of a Pisces. And what did we say earlier? Yeah, yeah. man. What we, she she said things I did not want to hear, yeah, and so you know she touched man. on those very sensitive subjects. Man. And I'm I'm again the, the, the roughness. Hold on, like hold on. <laughs> we're about to hit this next sentence. With these two combined, 
it will be almost impossible to have a healthy conversation in which there will be no hurt, distance, or anger. <laughs> Damn. Yep. They will rarely fight for Pisces partner usually has no reason to fight with anyone. So mm -hmm. Anthony ain't going to fight for nobody or Anthony's not going to fight anybody for this young lady. She's going to handle it on her own. <laughs> nah, but it's, but, she really but, will. <laughs> but it says, but they could have a lot of misunderstandings that lead to their separation pretty quick, which is bullshit because they communicate a lot. Right. At the end of the day, they communicate. But we're going to go on to the next one. What the next one say, bro? Oh, that's, that's, that's a heavy one right there. That's you emotions. Were, you want to sing a Drake verse? I almost did <laughs> to, to get to into all it. all my cancers out there. <laughs> yeah, emotional creatures. I'm telling y'all more. Oh, Lord. Um, and, then, and then what's interesting is underneath that, we go with the values between the both of them. So the emotions is at 99%. The values is at 75%. Um, shared activities, things that they like together. And it's uh, crazy because speaking on shared activities, I went to, you know how many times we planned to go to Cali, bro? Yeah. Hey, bro, like it was like almost three years back to back. We to wanted back. you to go yeah. that last time, but it was an issue. Uh, yeah, it, 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 no, nah, it wasn't even an issue. It was a dumb decision that was made at that time where we took somebody else and we should have took you. Yeah. But but it, I mean it, it was a lot of things that came in between that as well. So it's exactly. kind of like a last minute thing. It was too, a lot of so. legal issues that yeah. was going on around, and we're not going to talk about the legalities about everything yeah. that, was, <laughs> that was happening in our lives. And see, and, and to get on that, like that, this was my first time actually going to uh, someplace outside of just being around Texas. We went we went to uh, Los Angeles for our first time. She took you well, for my first time, and it was hers as well. But she's been to uh, Florida a couple of times. Yeah, and she's been she's already been out there. Like, yeah. I haven't. So so. so I'm going to let you know right now, Anthony's off the market, but ladies, if you're listening, this woman has set the bar high. Very. I can't even say that without that. <laughs> because no matter how you came to her broken, misunderstood, mm -hmm. messed up as a man, man, she still saw the light in you mm -hmm. and you guys still took a vacation. And, and, and I'll always say this, man. It's always to get out of each other's habitat just yeah. to get to know each other on a deeper level. Yeah. Because when you was in California, you was like, damn, I ain't got no job. You ain't got no job out here. Oh, we got this money in our bank account, baby. Yeah. We got to make this work. <laughs> so uh, should yeah. we go eat at this prime real place? Or should we go eat at McDonald's? Which one you want to do? Right, right. Because uh, I don't know if y'all know this. California McDonald's ain't like Texas McDonald's. The, the prices of the burgers ain't the same. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'd have been a That's California couple That's a whole other lifestyle out there, man. Yeah, 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 man. I mean, like, I'm thinking whatever I had in my back pocket was going to be enough just to get us out there. We, we was out there for a few days, That was too. out there for like almost a week. Almost, yeah. yeah. Almost. Yeah. It, was, it was like four days or something like that, I think. Yeah. So we, we was out there for a little bit. We're minute. not even talk about the X-rated stuff that probably happened out there. Man. I almost made another baby. <laughs> <laughs> we, we keep that behind doors, uh, man. Hey, we will come out with that one. Sooner or later, we'll be talking about that. But anyhow... You go out there, you guys are relying on each other. You guys are laughing, living life, loving each other, and so much more. Facts. It was Going beautiful. into the fourth quarter, bro. So, with everything that you've learned, the man that you become, uh, the father of two kids, handling up on your situation there. And, then, and I'm not even saying it's probably a pretty picture still from her perspective or from your perspective. Dealing with the past, talking about, you know, the, the, the mother of the kids, you know. But at the end of the day, you're handling your new situation like a man should. Right. At least I'm trying to. And or, yeah, you're trying to. So you're implementing it. Right. And not only are you trying to, but she's showing you necessary steps that she basically showing you her love language. Yeah. And she knows your love language, believe it or not. She knows what your love language is. Cause she and it's crazy. I never thought I could be understood. And, and, and it's funny because talking about this is something I, I tried to explain to her at times. And, you know, she kind of got tired and was like, well, why? Why do you keep bringing this up? Like, do you still love I'm like, hell no. Like, I'm just trying to make sure you understand where I'm coming from. She's like, I'm, I'm done with you talking about this. And I'm like, all right, cool. My bad. Like, but I just want to make sure. Girl, you, you need to hear it one more time. This dude <laughs> appreciates the hell out of you. Boy, you like, where I came made. from and where I am now, like, it's, my, my life is like, Totally different. I think that everybody on Facebook that know Anthony or anybody in life that know Anthony knows that he came from being a, a, a copper penny to <laughs> a half a dollar. 
Boy, we we, we and we're talking about in the change perspective. We ain't talking about paper. We're gonna talk about just change. <laughs> and half a dollar is, is like the top of the move. That's that's, yeah. that's top. That's the high. You know, a lot of people say it's crazy. Uh, you know that. Well, I mean, they really don't. But if they look at it from a different perspective, without somebody actually being in that situation, they would say you, you're crazy to, to marry someone within a year or two years. Nah, but nah. but when when you, when you love, you you can't you can't put no time nah. for my love. Like Never. it's it's. Nah. Anybody that no, nah, I'm not gonna say anybody. Out of the last relationship I've been out of, that was something that I told that young lady at the beginning. I'm like, if I love you, I, or if I want to marry you, I'm, I'm gonna, I know I'm going to marry you within the first two years. A man knows when he's going to marry a woman. He knows when he loves a woman. The first day we went on. <laughs> and, <laughs> I mean, I'm just going to be honest with you, man. This is something that yeah. we know. Yeah. And, 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 and we are so freaking... Uh, stubborn about it that we don't care what and that's our pro- friends and, and, are going to say. That, that's probably the exact reason why we go through the things we go through because until that moment happens, we are going to continue to be whomever the hell it is we are trying to figure out. Yeah. Because once we meet that woman, it's like, all right, whatever was happening before is done. Like, I'm, exactly. It's like, well, how, how can you just, how, it's just it's just that thing in that, I don't know, it's just that love is what it yeah. is. It's that yeah. love. And, and, and you know what's funny, man? We're going to get kind of X-rated right quick. Because, <laughs> My homeboy, okay, so my brother, Chris, and my homeboy, Dion, they always tell me, hey, man, we had this conversation when we talked to younger guys, younger men, and we say, hey, guys, don't have sex with a woman raw versus have sex with them, with the kind of one. Because their theory, I'm not going to say their, our theory is this. When you have sex with a woman with a condom on, there's like really no emotions there you know what i mean there's there's nothing that can be collected from her side to our side from our side to her side versus if we raw not only are we transferring genes and juices mm-hmm. back and forth but there's more of a um i don't know what the word is to fill in this gap but there's more of a presence of you know physical connections oh, so you almost bond through it exactly it's, it's more of like a physical yeah. juicy yeah, Sim, semen type. Of <laughs> it's, it's weird to say, but I mean, y'all, y'all, y'all get it. But yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. Ba- you're basically in each other's minds at that point. Like you, exactly. You, you're, you're, you're like I'm not ba- exactly. So if I was, if I was, if I had a condom on, this is how this is how the theory works. If I had a condom on, I'm just making love. I'm just, I'm just, we just doing it. You know what I mean? It just, I'm just. Yeah, it's we're almost. Gonna be, it's, it's, we're gonna it's, be it's like, like off the street. <laughs> I'm tearing it up. You know what I mean? Like, you ain't tearing up. You just you getting you you you're basically having yeah. sex. So, but. Raw dogging, you could be having sex, you could be making love, you can be just fucking her, but at the end of the day, you're fucking with the mind yeah, of not only her, but you. You're, you're intertwining your emotions even though you say you're not. Like, there, there's something there. Exactly. There's something there. Exactly. So And you, so, you tell yourself that by how you do it. Either it, you put a condom on or you don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I want to know, man, what makes us think... What makes us make that decision, like man? I have no crazy. idea. Not man, that booty so juicy ain't even wrap it up. I'm like, fuck it, man. And I guess what they say, you think with the wrong head. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah. you just think with the wrong head. Yeah. <laughs> That's some last minute head thinking right yeah. there. <laughs> but going back to what we're talking about, now you're at this point in life, and and like I said, we know us men, we know when we see a woman. We work hard for that woman. Mm -hmm. As long as everything is 100. Communication, bond, trust, shared activities, the values, what the communication, intellect, the trust. I know I said that already. And the sexual intimacy. If you have nothing else, please have communication. Please have communication. Because without that. I'm still working on that one, bro. My communication sucks. Man, I I thought mine was great once upon a time. Then I met her and it was. I thought mine was good too, bro. Well, yeah. but yeah. I, but but you talk through these things, yeah. and, and as you I, talk, you know, I still you get, don't. I still didn't talk. No, nah. I ain't wish. I got I got to sit down and have my conversation, and it's got to be like a one on one type of conversation that's going to end the conversations of all conversations to put us both not only in a good place mentally, but also emotionally at the same time. Yeah. Got to do it, dog. Yeah, got to do it. The level of maturity when you when you get there. Shit, man, I ain't that mature then. I just realized that too. God damn. Hey. Anyway, <laughs> let's get off of me. <laughs> so, so moving forward, what, what's the, what's the plan look like? 
as far as like you moving into your your next lesson of life. Like we we're moving into the fourth quarter. You're about to be like what thirty what? Thirty two this year. Thirty two this year. I'm still and still still how old is she? She's thirty. She'll be thirty two next weekend. Thirty two next weekend. Yeah. So you guys are right at the same age. Yeah, neck we and both thirty eight babies. Yeah, and you both know what you want. Yeah. Um. You know, I mean, the the goal is to get married, but we we are trying to put our values in place. Uh, Definitely try to have our understanding for each other in place. Um, and, you know, getting to where we need to be to have a, a healthy and a strong marriage. I mean, because she's already shown, like, with, with what I have right now, very little to none, or what I had coming into the relationship was already enough with my effort, but there's more that comes with it yeah. to, to actually keep a sustainable marriage together. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's like one thing is working on my credit, you know. Yeah. She's already got a house. I'm still... I, I want to get there. Yeah. And so with having the type of credit I have, I, I, it's hard to get anything. Yeah. And so for you me can to still wanna, get to her house. She's going to be well, paying out well, the right, that's And that's going to put me in another bond <laughs> yeah, with already yeah. being on these other... You're going to be up there. Yeah, I'm already on child support yeah. and all this. Got a car note too and so much other stuff. So it's, you know, add, adding a heavier payment like that is, you know, you think you can do it because you're, you're making money. But yeah. if you can pay less with a better credit, why not do it? Exactly. exactly. And so that, those are things that she's teaching me to... to to do right now so that when we get into our marriage, we can we can build and have money to do other things, like take our kids on vacation. Because we actually took our kids to South Padre, too. That's another trip we took. And we took the kids that time. Man. We, we took them to San Antonio, and then we took them to Padre. I'm just going to be honest with you, man. Like, like just sitting here next to you, man. This is all within a year. Just knowing you. <laughs> man, I'll say screw it, not 10 years. I'm going to say just knowing you 11 years. Because we we still met through you know mutual friends and right. whatnot. Still, still. Um, we, we was hooping before we actually started like actually yeah, knowing each other. Yeah, yeah, I was just too young to be around me at that time. Yeah, I was a knucklehead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's what that's what attracted me to y'all because of y'all's maturity and where y'all was at in life, and that's why I wanted to be around y'all. And, and I mean, it worked out for me because I, I saw what y'all were doing, how y'all were going about life, and I was like, that's that's what I want. Because the friends I was with wasn't looking at life that yeah. way. And it's obvious because we was all still But you know what's funny, that On the outside, it looked like that. But on the inside, we was like the friends you was hanging out with. Exactly, exactly. That's, that was so crazy. But, yeah, but it, was, it was a little more responsible, though. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, when I was yeah. doing my knucklehead activities, y'all was like, nah, bro, you can't be doing that. Yeah, I was like, you got to calm down, bro. I was like, what? Yeah, <laughs> Especially that time we almost got in the fight at that bar. Yeah, oh. Mm. Um, Anyways, but yeah, yeah, but that's, you know, yeah. like I said, I mean, just being around y'all, uh, y'all's maturity what, is what attracted me to y'all. Yeah. So I can say this, man. Like I said, through everything that out of the eleven years that uh, that I've known you, man, I can honestly say, like right now, man, I'm, I'm very proud of you. Appreciate it. Um, from a father standpoint, from a man standpoint, and also from a future, you know, husband. Like More even in a relationship, man, I, I respect you in your relationship, man, because um, I see the importance that this young lady is in your life. And I, I know I know where it's going. I don't want to put it out there because she needs to find out. Um, she will find out. But um, at the end of the day, man, you got you know the support of the group of us, and we it's, it's us four against yep. the world, man. We always nah, said definitely that. Is. So, um, and it's crazy because after our business, we all came back to each other, you know, and we, we, we had a little... We didn't even hate each other. Nah, it, it, we just it kinda, was some shit we had, talking. We had to go our own <laughs> ways because we, we was putting ourselves yeah. into something, and we, we split up, found ourselves again, and came back to each exactly. other. Exactly. And that's why I say the vibes of the earth always works, man. The vibes of the, work, uh, the, vibes of the earth always work, man. So, yep. so like I said, man, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of... I'm thank happy you, for you and this young lady. I'm happy for you and your three kids. I'm going to say three. I know you got two. But right, I, I, I say the same, and you know, she might not be mine through blood, but you know, I love her like she is mine. Oh man, you never know when she turned 13, she might be starting to <laughs> <laughs> You never know, man. We'll just, see. Just don't put yourself on child support for <laughs> third. Nah, <laughs> nah it, it, I don't think we'll ever go that right. I think where we're at is 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 perfect, so yeah, man. It's, it's, it's gonna be where what we both want. So, so I'm gonna say this, man, like, like closing this out, man. What was the lesson learned? So far up to 32, right? 32, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, right. going on 32, yeah. Going on 32. I'm going to say 32 because we're going to round it up. Basically, yeah. yeah. I know you got like, what, seven months, six months left, but seven months. About seven. Yeah, seven months. Not about, yeah, about seven. Seven, and she got like one. She, she got, got like a, a couple days. a couple days. Yeah, a couple yeah. Of days. So, throughout everything leading up to 32, man, what can you say, especially to our audience, younger men that's probably listening to this, what can you say? What was the biggest lesson learned? Like what what happened, and then what advice can you give 
for that young man or that young woman to actually not only avoid it, but if they're in that situation, how can they read it and possibly get themselves out of that situation? Well, that's kind of tough because, I mean, there's there's multiple things. But I, I think for myself, one of them was just learning how to put myself in a, a financially stable situation so that I can – I can basically have something to fall back on when when times hit 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 the ceiling or whatever it is. Well, you you hit rock bottom, because when you go through those moments, I mean, and you have nothing left. I mean, shit, it's it's tough to come back from. And so, if I'd say anything, put yourself in a situation to to be successful and to be prepared. You'll never be prepared, but just put yourself in a, in the mindset to be prepared for anything that comes your way. Exactly, and we're gonna say financially, emotionally. I mean, mentally. Definitely mentally and financially. Yeah. I mean, so, I, I know money shouldn't mean everything, but I mean, it's yeah, it's it's, it's money is it definitely it makes a, a huge difference. So, so with that being said, man, I want you guys to like honestly work on at least putting at least a thousand dollars in your savings account. Um, not even I can't even say like half of the population even have that in their account. Yeah, but if you start doing, doing that check. like right now, man, if you can at least sit like twenty five to I'm gonna say between twenty five dollars and a hundred dollars aside, you know, each week or every other week. You'll eventually get to that thousand dollars if you got the capabilities you're doing it now. Put that thousand dollars aside, and that way you at least got a basic, a foundation of you know being able to land back on. Not even touching it, but landing yeah. back on it. And then emotionally, what would you say emotionally? I say emotionally, and don't don't always put yourself first. You know, take a step back and, and try to understand another person's emotions because if you if you're acting out of your own emotions, and anger and stuff, it's it's usually never good. Yeah. It's usually never good. That, and that's, that's Anthony Showtime Davis' take on it. <laughs> my, my take on it is basically, you know, love yourself before you enter any relationship. If you see a woman or a man that you're interested in, take time. Let them be friends. Love yourself. Let yourself attract through that situation. And hopefully, it can grow from there. If it doesn't grow, then it wasn't meant to be. But at the end of the day, guess what? You love yourself. To me, that's like one of the most important things right there. Definitely. So, you do have to love yourself. Yeah, yeah. So, man, I want to take the time, man, to say, you know, thank you for coming out tonight. Almost, Devin. Thank you for having me. It's my this, first podcast, so, you know, it's, it was nervous at first, nerve-wracking a little bit. But, you know, after this one, hopefully we'll do another one oh, soon. Oh, no, we, we definitely, hey, we're going to, I got to bring you in for, <laughs> for another conversation, man. I'm going to try to get us four guys together so we can sit down and have a conversation, man. But uh, I just want to say thank you, you know, to the people that's listening to this right now, man. Just just please uh, follow me on uh, social media at Super C, the God. That's S-U-P-E-R-S-E-D-E-T-H-A-G-O-D, Super C, the God. I'm going to get a, um actual um, Instagram created for the After Dark Talk podcast. I don't have one right now, but um, this is definitely going to be up on my personal pages uh, as of right now. But um, just please, like... Comment, like, share, you know, even subscribe. So, and any feedback y'all have, please feel free to just exactly say comment. what you got to say. Comment, don't hold man. Back. I don't care if it's like some grimy, you know, <laughs> 50 cent type stuff, man. Just let me know, like, you know, what's the things that you would like to hear, uh, how we can hold the conversations better, like questions that we can ask, you know, even if you got some stuff going on in your life that you just want to get off your chest, man, I would love to you know, have you guys write an email to me or something like that, and we kind of go over it, even if it's like more than a one-on-one situation. Uh, the email is going to be afterdarktalkpodcast at gmail.com. You can email me there. Um, again, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening to this. Um, I want to thank my man, you know, Anthony Showtime Davis for coming out here, like I said, uh, once before, um, coming to rock with us tonight. I know it's, good. It's, it's really late. I mean, that's why we call it the After Dark Podcast. Uh, so... <laughs> You guys have a, a, a good night, um, and just look forward to the next podcast, all right? I think next time I'm going to bring some Henny. Oh, man. Thank you, guys. <laughs> have a good night.